Hello, good morning. Welcome to virtual yoga. My name is Lindsay. I am a yoga instructor at the University of Alabama at Birmingham, and this will be one of the health ambassadors um, yoga series that we're doing since um, COVID-19 has hit. We're all kind of on virtual time, so to speak. So today I hope that you're able to join me and be able to sort of reset on this Thursday morning. Um, we are going to start standing today. So if you're seated, just take your time and we'll find our way to a standing position. But also just as we're preparing to start, thinking about if you have water, you want to grab some water, or if you have a block or a strap handy that you might have, and you can always, um, I sometimes use that, I don't have it today, but there might be a few poses where I can offer that as a modification. Um, but as always, listening to your own body, and we're not trying to force anyone. Obviously, I can't be there to see and adjust anyone. So please always know, you know, you're doing these classes at your own risk. So, but as I would like to, as I said, um, I'd like to start standing. So if you can find your way to a standing position, and we're just going to start with some easy twists. Just to kind of loosen that. Taking some nice deep breaths all the way in from the belly, filling the lungs from the lower ribs. And just letting the arms be loose. Nice wide stance. Swaying from side to side if you need to. Let your hands kind of gently massage the hips a little. And feel that heart starting to lift up. So three nice deep breaths here. And we'll slowly move to face the long edge of your mat. Taking a stance about shoulder width apart, we're going to start to inhale and reach the arms overhead, feeling the feet grounding down as the fingertips rise to reach up towards the ceiling. And we feel the heart lifting up out of the lower back. Shrink those shoulders down into their sockets. And as we begin to deeply inhale, maybe trying to lift a little bit higher if you want to, clasping the fingers at the top. And just slide back in here. And then exhaling, hinging at the hips. We're going to bend down and come to a first forward fold. Bending the knees here as much as you need to. Seeing if we can get the heart to reach forward and down towards the feet. Relaxing the neck. You might like to just sway from side to side here. Just beginning to notice the hips move, the spine lengthens. On your next inhale, we're going to slowly bring our, our chest to 45 degree angle. So the hands can rest either on the thighs or the shins. And on the exhale, coming back down to a forward fold. Deeply exhaling, fully following the breath out. And then inhaling back to our half lift. And exhaling to a forward fold. Inhaling one more time, half lift. Maybe reaching the arms behind for our airplane. Squeezing those shoulders, those elbows together. I'm going to have to. Otherwise, that is going to ring and talk to us. So, exhaling back to our forward fold. And then from here, bend the knees nice and liberally, and then slowly just rolling the spine up to a standing position. And we'll inhale to back to the extended mountain, reaching those fingertips up, feeling the expanse of the heart. Now I'm going to turn to face you. You can face 
the, the screen as well if you like. We'll just begin by lowering the left arm and reaching that right arm across the body and inhaling back to center. See if we can exhale fully in this, this flexion, this extended motion. Collarbone is smiling. So about two to three times on either side. Again, feeling those feet also grounding down into the mat and lifting up sort of in the arch of your feet. So kind of pressing in towards the knees as if you could spread the mat apart underneath your feet. And we'll slowly come back to center, inhaling the arms to outside, just parallel to the floor. And again, and hinging forward, I'm going to face the long edge of my mat again. This time, stepping back to our first downward facing dog. Focusing on our hands, wide fingers, just pedaling the feet one at a time. Breathing deeply, widening the shoulder blades, pressing the heart towards the mat. So we're going to begin with our left foot, extending the left foot out behind, reaching through the heel, and then slowly lowering that leg back down, then healing to the other side, and just alternating here two to three times on either side. Only going as far as what's comfortable for you. And slowly lowering the knees. And we'll see back to child's pose first, feeling the length of the spine, reaching those fingertips really far forward. Recentering, letting go. Limitations perceived. Just releasing those from this time, this space. We're going to come into an kneeling position. We're just slowly finding our way to our knees. And then we're going to step just right foot forward, right to where your knee can be over the, the heel. So the back, the back knee will be pretty far behind the hip. We're just going to start to slowly move forward and back through a hamstring stretch, trying to make sure that the hips stay right over the midline of your body and that the spine stays as long and straight as possible. So here's a place where if you have a block, it might be helpful. Just use a block to stabilize. And slowly we can step back from kneeling position and step the other foot forward in the lunge. Deep and breathing into this hip flexor stretch is going to help you to sink those hips a little lower on the exhale. So really focusing inward on your own body, the own breath that's flowing through you, your own breath. Maybe flexing the foot, pointing the toe with that extended leg. We'll slowly come back forward, lifting up to a lunge and stepping back to downward facing dog. From downward facing dog, we're going to start to slowly pull foot forward to a plank. So moving down to the belly from plank. You can lower the knees if you need to. So just exhaling down to the belly. And then beginning to draw the heart forward up into cobra. Feeling the shoulder blades squeeze together. Slowly exhaling back down. And pressing back to child's pose. 
We're a downward facing dog. So we're going to go through this a few times. Inhaling forward to plank. Exhaling down to the belly. And then lifting the heart, cobra. Potentially lifting the hands off the mat. And then either lowering the knees and sinking back to child pose. Just building heat here. On the third time through, we might be able to press all the way up to upper facing dog. Lifting the navel towards the spine to help support the hips as you roll back to downward dog. Breathe here, touching your breath, spreading your fingers wide, and pressing down into the mat with the fingertips. So this time we're going to lift the right foot out behind, inhaling to reach through the heel, and then slowly curling the knee into a plank, not a plank, a lunge, excuse me. So finding our way to a lunge here on the left foot forward. So feeling the weight kind of shifting forward and back. Rocking on the ball of the back foot, an extended leg. And then lifting the hips and just stepping back to downward facing dog. Moving to the other side. So this time lifting up right foot. Extending the heel. And then as you begin to exhale and curl to the end, we can see if we can kick the foot out the last minute. Planted between the hands. So just feeling this hip mobility here. Rocking forward and back. And then we'll lift the hips, step back to downward facing dog. Touch your breath for a moment. We're going to begin to inhale forward to plank. And then down through chaturanga. Exhaling to the belly. Inhaling to upper dog. And exhaling to downward dog. So building with this, again, lifting left foot out behind. Planting the foot forward in a, in a lunge. And we can add it to this by twisting, either just by grounding into the mat with the grounded arm. Twisting into the knee. You can also lower a knee, come to vertical and actually twist the torso, putting that elbow on the back side of the knee. And we'll slowly come back to center, lifting up the hips, stepping back. And moving to the other side, extending that right foot out behind. I did the wrong side. <laughs> Hopefully we're just evening it up on either side. So again, options are lifted leg, extending through the grounded extended leg. Or lowering the knee and then twisting into to the way you like. Make sure to breathe. And we'll slowly rotate back to center. Again, stepping up and back to downward facing dog. Last time through, we're going to build one more time on this third round. So inhaling to our plank position, moving down through Chaturanga. Inhaling up, upward dog. Sometimes you can sort of feel the hips, moving the hips from side to side. And then lifting the hips back to downward dog. So this third time through, we're going to come into a full lunge and then move to a lizard. So starting on whichever foot you'd like to extend out behind you first. Inhaling and beginning to lift with the heel. 
pressing into the hands to reach the spine long and support the shoulders. And slowly exhaling to curl the leg in for a lunge. Now here in our lunge, what we do is we're going to step the foot a little bit out to the side of your mat. Some people even like to point the toe slightly off the mat. And then slowly just lowering the back knee, letting the top of the foot rest on the mat. And lower down to the elbows. Breathing here if you can. If we're not ready to move into the elbows, just hold here and feel the hips sink deeper with each exhale. When you're ready to come back up, gently press back to the hands, placing the toes on the mat, lifting the knee, lifting the hips, stepping back to downward dog, and resetting to inhale and extend through the other heel. Exhaling to curl, planting that foot. Go ahead and walk the foot out about five to six inches to the side of your mat. And then just slowly lowering down, sinking a little deeper. Facing dog. Let's go ahead and lower the knees here, taking a nice wide stance with the knees to create space for the breath as we sink back to child's pose, resting our head. If you'd like to, you can also stack the fists in the front and elevate the neck. Feeling the breath move through the lungs. Feeling the back rise and fall. And slowly we're going to start to move back forward to coming into just a kneeling or, or tabletop position and sort of working a little bit more on the core stability. Coming into just our first, um, our spinal balance will be what we do. And so what it is is we're extending one arm and the alternate leg Keeping the shoulders parallel to the floor, hips parallel to the floor, just extending through that heel, nothing neutral, and then slowly coming back to the other side, and then exhaling the center. Feeling that control of the core, feeling the belly button draw close to the spine, and then reaching through the fingertips while keeping that shoulder blade engaged in its top. And slowly coming back to center, we're going to move to um, side plank. So a few options for side plank. Just extending both legs down and stacking the feet. Or if you want a little bit less intensity, drop one knee and have a kick stand. But still focusing on lifting up through the, the hips and lifting the heart. Lifting through the fingertips as well. The third option would be to add a little bit more intensity. You can hear from 
Side plank knee lifts in the leg. Breathing deep, really feeling that shoulder blade rounding down through the hand. We'll slowly roll back to center. Take a child's pose here if you need it. Downward dog, child pose. Both of those poses are considered rest poses. And then when you're ready, you can slowly move around to the other side. Coming into plank here. And keep in mind, one side could be different than the other side. So if you do the kickstand on one side and you're not ready for kickstand on the other side, or you want to do it on this side, being okay with wherever you're at is a big part of yoga. So just really accepting whatever your body is telling you that you need at this moment. Running down through that shoulder, lifting the heart space. Lifting the top leg, perhaps. Running our way back to center. And then why don't we go ahead and press, bend knees down, press back. Pile toes here on this side. So this time as we do child's pose, see if we can, instead of reaching the arms forward, press the hands down into the mat and help press the tailbone down closer towards the heels. See if you can ground the tailbone down into the heel space. And then slowly walking the hands towards the knees. I'm trying to get a cat cow flow here. I like to have my hands in the center. Sometimes you can also place your hands on the outside. We're just beginning to see if you can feel that heart space between the shoulder blades, pressing back on the exhale, down and down through the sit bone. And then on an inhale, just shifting the heart forward between the shoulders and then lifting the gaze, rounding down through the shoulders, through the hands. I'm just moving through this upper back sort of cat cow feel. I like to call this pose kitten pose because I feel like a kitten whenever I'm sitting uh, sort of like this. Put my paws are in front. So slowly we can come down to our sit bones. So coming around to bring our uh, feet into a loose butterfly. You notice my feet are actually in a very sort of a diamond, a, a, more of a diamond than a butterfly. And you might feel the stretch sort of on the outside of your hamstring. But essentially just starting with your heart, guiding your heart forward as far as it will go. And then just sort of relaxing into it, allowing the head to relax and breathe into the leg here. Just breathe into that back body. The tendons sort of allowing them to sort of twist and squeeze. Slowly rolling up back to a vertical position. We're going to step the feet wide here. And coming into a wide straddle split. If you can, see if you can sit up 
fall on those hip bones. Sometimes elevating the hips a little bit on a block or a pillow can help just to feel like your hips are rotating forward rather than rounding in the lower back. So trying to sit up onto the hips. I'm just breathing here for a moment, lifting up out of the lower back by supporting the heart with your core. Rounding down through the knees, through the heels. And then if you'd like to, you can see about taking your peace fingers and breaking your big toe of your right leg or left leg first, depending on which side feels better. But stacking the shoulders and seeing if we can just come at the foot with the side of our body, opening the rib cage, and still feeling the sit bones rounding down. Inhaling back to center, maybe reaching to the other foot. Extending through the fingertips. Collarbone is smiling. And we can come back to center. So we're starting to move to the long edge of your mat again. We're going to slowly roll down onto the spine. And first, just placing those feet underneath the knees. Hands will be on the sides of your hips. You might like to uh, lift the head and make sure that the spine is nice and long. And then beginning with the hips, we're just peeling the spine off the mat, pressing down into the heel. To lift the hips up into bridge. And exhaling to slowly lower back down, one vertebrae at a time. So going at your own pace, moving with your breath. Slowly come back down to the mat, drawing both knees towards your chest. You might like to just rock the knees forward and back. Some people like to go in a circle. I tend to only like to go one direction, just to loosen the muscles up first. So either forward and back or from side to side. And then beginning to move into a twist, relax, you can reach the arms out to either side and either straightening the legs or leaving them bent. You're just allowing both legs, both knees to fall open to one side, or not open, but fall to one side. Rounding the shoulder blades. And deep breathing to really relax the spine, all the muscles in the lower back. You might pull your back up. And then slowly pulling the feet in towards the, the legs and rolling back to center. Preparing to go to the other side. You can sort of turn the head too, look out behind at the, the arm that's behind your body. You get a nice full twist through the whole length of your spine. With each breath, just relaxing a little deeper, sinking into your mat, and your 
ready to strong the knees back to center. And we can go ahead and extend the legs down for Tadasana or corpse pose. Just allowing the hands to rest open on the inner side. Feeling the breath be natural, gently just moving in and out. Trying not to force anything. Really just allowing the body to settle out and be balanced. Relaxing it consciously, allowing gravity to pull us down while we can support it. You're also feeling that support from the ground beneath you. So we come back to a standing or seated position. You can roll to one side. And using those hands to help press back up to a seated position. We're a little bit over time here, so I'll go ahead and say namaste. Thank you very much. Again, my name